Hi, I'm Mike Haddock and I'm continuing the series on Rock Facing and Shaping Stone, Part 5. And I'm down here in Wilkes-Barre and I'm in the backyard of Tomasetti Stone Company who deals a lot with limestone. And in his shop he still has a lot of the old tools they used back in the 1800s to move some of these pillars and heavy stones. So I'm going to do a little demonstration on it. They, we got what they got, Lewis Pins or Box Lewis. People call them a different name. I'm going to do a little demonstration on it. I'm in the backyard here of Thomas Eddy's, and this is an old set of Lewis Pins. He has a lot of old Lewis Pins down there. You can see it's actually bent. So they used to put a lot of weight on it. But for this demonstration, I got a piece of limestone, and I put a hole in that way, and I put a hole in this way, you take your Lewis pins on top of the stone, that's one. Take it over here, that's two. And then you would get your chain like this. Put it through. Now this is just a demonstration, but uh, you get the idea. You hook it up. You hook your chain up and you pick your stone up. And that's how they would pick a lot of them stone up in the, when they were building the cathedrals and everything. They're called Lewis pins. See that? Lewis pins. They also have another type of pin which is called a box Lewis or it could be called a stone Lewis or it could be called a pocket Lewis. And this was what they would do was they would drill a hole in these big columns. They take this apart and they stick it in the column and they bolt it together and when they picked it up it would pick up the five ton of stone. Just this one here. Here's another one that he has in his shop. It hasn't been used in centuries, I think. But that's another way to do it. Now we're going to go look at a little book where they sell some of this stuff. So while we're down here at Thomas Eddy's, we're going to look at this book about stone lifting. Here's a, an example of those Lewis pins. And right here it tells you the capacity, up to 2,400 pounds. Uh, they also have these curb lifting squeeze things we have it over here too and they got some lifting clamps over here they have some other kind of this is a vacuum you see me do that out in Jersey so I want to turn you on to this so that you good got a good idea over in here they have the straps if you ever see them moving with the straps Now if you go on the internet and you look up Indiana Limestone Handbook, there's a lot of information in there about working with limestone for architects and engineers and masons. If you go to page 44 and you get in there, it's going to show you about handling the limestone. You're going to see the Lewis pins and the clamps and things like that. So that helps out. And if you get up into page 22, it talks about mortar. And they recommend that you use some Portland. So look it up for yourself. Get your own ideas. Uh, I hope it helps you out a lot. Now also, you could also use a clamp, depending on what you're doing, because you don't want to uh, hurt the stone. But these are C clamps, and they make special ones. This is just a regular one. But see, this will pick the stone up too. You gotta be careful with these. They loosen up, you're in trouble. Uh, I usually go down Thomas Eddy's, and when I go down there, he has the planing machines, and he does the carving. We're just gonna take a little quick look around at what they do. Uh, and you can see all the machinery over here. And we'll look at some of the artwork, kind of the artwork that they create. 
and you can see the kind of stuff that they they deal in so anytime I have to do any kind of uh, limestone I come down here here are some kind of the work they do now you see me going down Thomas Eddy's a lot because every time I need a stone thread for a set of brick steps or stone steps or I need a wall cap I go down there he has everything in stock pier caps it's easy for me to get but also he's a wealth of information he's like third generation of the people that work there in the stone companies all kind of marble he filled me in a lot about the quarries on the previous video and he knows where all the churches were built by which quarry the guy's a wealth of information so if you ever buy some capstones or something uh, check him out also now I want to talk a little bit about the way they used to build those old buildings and I got this real crude example up and one of the thumb one of the rules of thumb with a masonry is if it could stand up there without cement it should stand up there with cement and if you're building something you got to kind of have that in your mind now I told you that most of the buildings like the Capitol buildings and the government buildings and the churches they were all pre-made and they had shop tickets for a lot of these stones so before we get into explaining this a little more let's go talk to Wayne Faree who was a carver on the National Washington Cathedral. Well just to continue on about how you pre-make everything or you think it out before you do it I'm with Wayne Faree who was the carver on the National Washington Cathedral and if you've seen my video about the Washington Cathedral you'll see how that building was built and there's a book here with his picture in it I just want to show you that a little bit from uh, the cathedral but well, Wayne when uh, you you were working at the cathedral uh, they would give you a shop ticket for each stone each stone was actually thought out and and drawn out before they use it could you tell us about that yeah pretty amazing uh, now I was just one of many stone carvers throughout the years it took almost a hundred years to build that cathedral 90 years I was there for the last three years with 12 other carvers uh, but we were uh, given assignments that included uh, a lot of repetitious sculptures like angels and what is called crockets but then uh, we had a, a problem with supply uh, from uh, the Indiana supplier who was actually doing a lot of the stone cutting and we would get stones that were, were all cut and fashioned with the main design of the building and then there were uh, squares and blocks left where there was actually the carving that was uh, more the decorative part of the building stone but it got to the point where they couldn't keep up with with us and so we started doing the whole the whole stone uh, out of a block with what was called a shop ticket which had the yeah, drawing of the design and all the dimensions and uh, so that's what we eventually started doing all all the carving and all the stone cutting uh, for the building but most of it did come from Indiana and we were the decorative uh, artisans that were sort of decorating the stones to be put up at the cathedral okay and sometimes when you're doing a private job because you're a private stone cutter you actually have to cut it out of styrofoam first and show the customer what it is well, uh, there was a particular incident where I was working for the uh, uh, Almira College in Almira, New York, and they wanted to, we had a project for six very large gargoyles that were going up on the building, and they wanted mock-ups of that in styrofoam, and so that was sort of a special uh, incidence of, of having somebody who really wanted to see a model of what was what was going to take place and, and you have that that model right here we're going to take a look at it well i still have one of the styrofoam uh models that we made to show the college of what what the actual stone would look like okay this is one of the styrofoam models that we made to show the college what we were going to do and uh we we carved these models uh, we use the model to carve a piece of stone the exact size 
it came in 4,800 pound blocks and there were six of them they're all different uh, I, I just happen to have this one styrofoam model left now it was just like Wayne was saying all these buildings were pre-made usually at the quarries before they got there the big parts and then the masons would just kind of clean it up or the carvers would do their carving and they'd put it on top of the building but mostly when you go to a limestone company you give them what they call a shop ticket and what that shop ticket is is it tells you exactly the way you want that stone made now if I was going to go down Thomas Eddy's this is an example of what a shop ticket would look like but you don't have to get real fancy with it you could do something very very simple just like this it's a window sill and it's 36 inches this way 7 inches this way 8 inches that way show it to him he cuts it out in the saw and he's got a shop ticket, something to go by. So all those stones at the cathedrals and everywhere was basically pre-made and then the other stuff was random. Now I'm going to get into talking about how these buildings were built. And this is a, I just set this up for a crude example. But see, all the limestone went in this way. There was no wall ties, there's no rebar and it was kind of toothed in and out so that this face was embedded into the actual stone wall. And what I'm going to do is kind of show you around this just to get an idea what I'm talking about. And then I'm going to do a demonstration in how they built these old castles, whether they're built out of stone or brick or limestone or marble or whatever. So let me just show you the, around this first. Now we're going to start out here and we got the facade. You see me carved that out a little bit. Here's a carving I got down at uh, Thomas Settings, and I want to explain to you about restoration, but this is the basics. Usually these old buildings, they would facade it like this, they tooth it in to the side stones, or brick if they're doing that, but when you get around the back where no one's looking, they fill it with junk, different kind of stones, pieces, blocks, and you're going to see a lot of evidence of this when we go to these castles and, and the places that I'm talking about. So that's basically how they would build it up and down. We're going to do a good demonstration and show you how to look at this kind of stuff. Now for the rest of this video, I'm going to do a demonstration on all these castles and everything were built back in the day. And these techniques were used right up until about the 1940s. And then they got into the new school stuff. And we're going to divide all that stuff as we go. But all I did was I got two strings here. And the first example is going to be like they built Conway Castle in Wales. If you go over to England and you cross over into Wales, they have all the old castles over there. And this is the way they were built. They don't build like that anymore, usually because of the earthquakes out in California. But that Conway Castle has been there, I think, since 1282, which was 200 years before they discovered America, and it's still there. So I'm going to show you the techniques. We're going to start out with some stone, and any time a mason, he wants a little corner there, they want to go as close as they can, and they want to trim that stone, so they use the least amount of cement as they can. So if we're going to pretend that this is a rock, we're going to put some lime mortar down because in them days, that's all they had. And we squish it down because the less lime mortar we got, the better off we are. Remember I told you, if something stays there when it's dry, it's going to stay there when it's wet. Now here's another one. Look at that, not too bad. And I guessed at that one. So we're going to put that one in. We trim it up best we can because we're going to cover this whole thing with a plaster. Why, do, why did they call the old castles, you see them all built out of stone, but the truth is they built it out of, uh, they covered all the stones with stucco. Now the rule of thumb is I always want to put your stones were going to cross each other. See that? We want it to go into the wall. And it doesn't matter how we do it, we want to make sure 
that. Everything crosses each other. Just now see that don't really work that good so maybe we'll put it here and then we'll get something else in here. Just like they build or you see me building retaining walls. Anything that works. That's all. See that fits in there like that. Good. Now we're going to go a little farther. Now let's pretend this is lime mortar. I'm just using wet sand because I want to make the point. Now we got to knock that off. Put that in there like this. And then we'll just put a couple more in so I can make my point. Maybe we'll put one in because we want it to come into the wall like that. And then we'll get another one. We'll use this flat skinny one. We're going to put it in the wall like that. Now as we're going to put these in the wall, you're going to notice something. And that is, let's see, that's a little too skinny for there. Let's see what else we got. Maybe this one will fit just like that. And get a little sliver and we'll shove it down in there just like that. See so that a little sliver. Now when they built these castles back in the old days, this is what they would do. Let's take a look at Conway Castle. I'll show you what I'm talking about. I want to see how these castles are built. All they were was you put the good face stone on the side, just like you build a wall, a retaining wall like I was doing it. Put the junk in the middle. And the whole castle was built like that. So now we got our, our laid out like this. But we got the center in here. Well, what do we do with the center? Well, back then to make lime mortar was a big deal. So they would fill it with any kind of junk they could find. You see that? They'd fill it. And then they'd fill it with the mortar just like that. You see what I mean? They wanted to use as, at least as they can back in those days because mortar was hard. It was easier to get stone than it was mortar. And then what they want to do is they want to continue. So they built it up to the next thing. Maybe you want to put a little piece here. See that? This is the way I did a video. It's called Early American Stonework. Then in the middle, what do you do? You fill it with junk. And this is the way they built all those castles. They just filled it with all the junk they could and they filled it in. That's it. And, and if you got gravel laying around, you want to pack it in there. That's how they built those castles. No big deal. That's the basics. And you fill it like this. You make sure you fill it in. Just like that. Now we're ready to go. And we're going to go a little farther. So, we're going to find a couple stones and we're going to overlay it. Remember I told you, there's one here. Let's see, see? I overlaid this joint a little bit. That works good there. And we're going to cover it. Look at this. This is even the right kind of stone. I'm going to use anything that works. Trim it up. Put it there. Can't do it that way. No. Nope. So maybe we'll put this one like that, you see? So then we'll put this one like that. Let's see. That's it. We want to put it close down to the other stone. We don't want joints. Because it's, it was harder in those days to do the cement than it was anything else. Let's see. Just keep turning the stone around until something fits. Put 
Push it in there. Fill in behind it with every, anything you got, anything that's going to work. And you keep going. That's the basics of the way they built those castles. Then when they were done, they would plaster the whole outside of the castle with lime mortar. Now Mike, why would they, why would they do that with lime mortar, plaster the whole outside of the castle? Because they don't want the enemy to see how it was built. So it doesn't matter what kind of stones they used or where they used it, that's what they did. So that's the basics of, of masonry. I did other videos on retaining walls and everything. We're going to go a lot farther, but I want you to get the idea. Conway Castle, they built on a rock. They put the cement down, they put the stone down, they put the cement down, they put the stone down. They plastered it up, and that's it. And just like everything else, every year they'd be going around the whole castle, replastering it, making it look again. So I hope that makes sense to you. Now when it comes to lime mortar and hot lime and everything they use, especially in Europe, you gotta talk to the experts. So before we leave, let's talk to one of the guys that was restoring Conway Castle and how he tells you they rendered it and what they used. What we have is we do the joints with a, a, lime, a hot lime and sand aggregate mix, three to one or two and a half to one. When that had gone off, we would have a sand aggregate lime mix slurry or render if you like right and then we would have the final waterproof top coat of pure hot lime with just pure hot lime which was mixed with um it was made it was limestone burn up to like a 280 degrees kiln really hot and then slaked cooled and then they would add what like animal lard to it and it had a chemical reaction with the lime which made a, a total waterproof seal while still allowing air breathable and right. so this, moisture control. So any moisture that came up from the building would still escape. Right. But rain wouldn't get in. I see. Okay. This is an old, a really old traditional. Um, yeah. Traditional whole thing, whole different thing in Pennsylvania. It's good to see what other guys are yeah, doing. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I watch a lot of um, stone masons on uh, from yeah. your your natural woods. So that's it. And the last thing I want to leave on this video is to remind you that that castle was built on solid rock. There's no footings, there's no rebar, there's no wall ties. It's been there for over 700 years. So we're going to get into that new school later. The whole castle was built on solid rock. So I've been going back and forth with these videos because I'm trying to make my points and I'm going to have to go back and forth as I go so this all jams together somewhere down the road. I want you to check out Wayne Faree's channel. He's the carver that worked at the National Washington Cathedral. And we're going to be showing you how they integrated that stuff into these castles. And uh, we're going to go into the brick castles up in Denmark and Sweden. We're going to talk about the Great Wall of China. And we're going to do a lot of these stuff on these sites that I've already visited. So thanks for watching. I'm Mike Haddock. Until next video.